What would you do if life took away your dream? I couldn't move at all. I couldn't move my leg. Would you give up? I didn't really grasp the idea of like, oh, this stuff could kill me. Or would you sacrifice everything for one more chance? God has a plan for me because I could have easily died. And they closed the door. They told me, you're not playing anymore. Growing up in Arab Alabama, Stephen Clark was surrounded by football. Football down there is pretty much a religion. Down there, it's a little, it's a little different. Everybody's a little bread and a little different. Whoa. A population a little over 8,000. Wow, just pancakes, some kid. It wasn't hard for Clark to stand out. I was a big kid when I was growing up, and I was a lot bigger than everybody else, and I smacked the heck out of a quarterback. And everybody started going crazy, and I'm like, dude, this is awesome. Like, I'm getting credit. I love this. And that's when I first knew I was like, yeah, I'm definitely going to play this game for a long time. Clark would attend Syracuse University to play in the Atlantic Coast Conference. But I'll never forget after my, or his freshman year, I forget what year that was, but we played Clemson that year. After the game, Dabo said something to our head coach at Syracuse, like, I have no clue how you ended up getting that kid out of Alabama to Syracuse, but he's going to he's gonna be special. Dabo's a pretty good evaluator of talent, so uh, that kind of solidified uh, how good of a player um, he was going to be. We were practicing on Tuesday practice, doing like a blitz pickup, and one of our DNs got hit on the side and landed on my leg. Apparently, I have this gene in my body that makes my blood just a little thicker than most. And when you get an injury that bleeds a lot and you cut off the circulation, it can cause a clot. So I had four blood clots in my groin, one in my hamstring, one in my popliteal vein, behind my knee, and one in my calf. I couldn't move at all, I couldn't move my leg. Clark spent that summer rehabbing and was eventually cleared by medical professionals. So I go see the team doc, and team doc's like, you're not gonna play here, you can't play here anymore. What is he talking about? I've got it cleared by many doctors. He, th he says I can't go, I'm gonna go out and prove to him that I can play, not only play in college, but I'm gonna go play in the league. And I'm gonna show him that he was wrong. He decided to reunite with two former coaches, Tim Lester and Tim Doust. So when he came in here, definitely had a chip on his shoulder to, to make sure everyone knew that he could still play and play well. I was like, all right, I have a lot of rust on me. I got to shake it off. So. As he got back in football shape, you know, he really started playing well again. However, one question still remained. Would Clark be eligible to play in the season opener against USC? We were working with the NCAA, trying to, trying to get that sit-out year eliminated due to all the different circumstances that had been going on with him. Friday morning comes along, we're going to practice. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, dude, we play tomorrow, and I don't know if I'm playing at all. We were on the field uh, doing our walkthrough and got the phone call from Jeff Stone saying, you know, just heard from the NCAA. Dropped the news that Stephen Clark was, was eligible to play this year and they all went nuts and jumped all over him. I thought back, I'm like, dude, I'm really blessed. After all I've been through, being able to do what I love again was just amazing, I loved it. That was a cool moment uh, for everybody, you know, going into our first game.
I would say it was less difficult than last time. Clark has a different role, but his love for the game has never wavered. I love the sport, and this is sports taught me so much more that I would love to get back to it. Um, so coming here, getting the extra, extra opportunity from the coaches that I've known for a good while, it, it means the world to me because they didn't have to do that. You know, they didn't have to take a chance of, oh, well, will I be able to play, will I not? Um, they didn't have to do that, but they wanted me here. Um, and they gave me the opportunity to come and like, help these guys out for at least a year, and then for the next year, help coaching too. His days as a player might be over, but his career is just getting started. He shares his own experiences about the game that could have taken his life. My experience, my love of the game, I would tell him to just, to just keep going. Like even when stuff gets hard, like during camp, during spring ball, even when you don't think like, dude, is this for me? Like you just gotta keep pushing through it. Cause at the end of the day, once it's all said and over with, like you look back and I don't want them to have any regrets. If you want to do something, you do it. No matter what anybody says, you, you do it. And you keep going and until you re reach it. Once you achieve something like that, whatever, no matter what it is, you'll never have a regret like, oh, I quit on it, I can't do it. Like, you'll never have that what if. Like, I would never go back and, and, and try to change anything because I love this sport. It's something that I want to be a part of until you know, I'm dead.